Lord, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to go into a short um, study of the word, then we'll continue to pray. So, we'll finish our series on um, life and health. So, before we start studying, let's take our declaration of understanding as we usually do. One, two, let's go. Now, I declare. Now I declare the Lord has given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I'm being filled with the knowledge of his will. In all spiritual wisdom and understanding. As a result of this, I'm walking in a manner worthy of the Lord. I am pleasing him in all respects. I'm bearing fruit in every good work. And I'm increasing in the knowledge of God. Now again, I incline my ears to his word. God is entering my heart. It is giving me light and direction. It is healing me in every area. And it's making me more and more like the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats. The Lord is good. All right, let us at the door quickly settle down. Once again, welcome to the School of Prayer. We are going to continue. I'm hoping we can conclude that today, but if it doesn't work, you know the way it is. We'll come back next time. All right, to finish up um, the short series we've been doing on the gospel of life and health. Again, let me say it again. I wanted to say amen when I finish the prayer. This is the will of God concerning you that you will prosper and be in health. Amen. That's what John said. He said he noticed that you were walking in the truth. As you walk in the truth of God, every affliction in your life will be removed in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, there's a difference between the will of God and the judgment, decree. What you experience is not necessarily the will of God. You have to ensure that what you experience is the will of God. It's your duty. That's why Jesus gave it to us as a prayer point. Thy will be done. We need to invoke the will into reality. What is the will of God? That which he desires. That which he wrote. He writes. He has written some things concerning you. They are reflected in the prophets. You see it all over the place. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is the will of God concerning you. That you will prosper and be in health is the will of God concerning you. So it's your duty to go to God and say, your will, let it be done in my life. We have explained, please don't make excuses for things that are not right. I hope you get my point. You know, I do a bit of um, reading, well, not the details, but the reports from advanced physics. I enjoy it. And the more I read those things, the more I realize how complicated life is, the more I realize that the scriptures are so plausible. Now, not, I, I believe the scriptures, but that they are reasonable. That the word of God is reasonable. That for, for the Bible to say that God said, let there be light, and light came into existence. It's not, it's not the difficult. Anybody say doesn't believe that, can you believe that? Why can't you believe that? Why can't you believe that? More crazy things are being believed. One of the crazy ones I heard recently, well, some time ago, is the one of what they call, now, I have to draw big English for those who like big English. They call it retro-causality. Now, for me, why it was interesting was that before I saw it in physics, hmm, I had preached that God can change the past. And people thought it was ridiculous. I said, oh, oh, physics is now, that they can propose it as a theory. They found out that there are things you do to certain particles now. And it changes how they behaved a short while ago. Please, if you like, you just go and Google it, retro causality. So the moment, when I see those, I just laugh and I said, <laughs> we preach this thing from scriptures. Now they're discovering it now. What am I going to say? Your faith creates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the point. There's a creative, creative power in believing the word of God. We're sharing the word of God in my house this morning. You know, when we go to that Hebrews chapter 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, we read it again and again. You know, they, 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 you know in my house, they, they moved to Hebrews chapter 5. So, when they finished reading, I said, have you finished chapter 4? Ah, they said, yes, so we have read chapter 4, like four times, uh, three times. I said, it has not finished. Go back to it. <laughs> it went back and read it again. And really, it was there that it hasn't finished. We we're talking about entering into rest. Entering into rest. Entering into rest. That God said, let us labor to enter into rest. 
So I explained to my people, what does rest mean? It's a place where God does, you, you allow God to do what he wants to do in your life. But you have to labor to enter. And how do you enter? It's through believing the word of God. That instead of laboring physically, you labor to believe. Why? Because if you can believe, he said, the word of God is alive and active. That word will now go and do what you will have labored for for yourself. Do you get my point? And I give them testimonies of how God's word did things for me. Because the word is alive. The word is like, now this is not a very good description to help you. The word is a powerful angel. Now it's more powerful than angels. Angels hearken unto the voice of God's word. But I just want to use an angel to explain that the word is intelligent. It thinks. So if we believe it, we activate the power in the word. What am I going to say? There's healing in the word. There is, there is, there is. One of our sisters sent me a testimony. I said, and this happened long ago, and you never shared it. She she was just, you know, she was following us online, and there was something that I shared about the the one brother that was in hospital with Lassa fever. I was very sick, and how the word delivered in a few days. Ah, So she wrote in her own testimony. I said, ah, and this happened more than, maybe like, Eight to ten years ago, and we're just hearing it today. As she had a serious ailment, and the doctor said this and this to them, I'm coming. She went to collected scriptures and pumped her head full of it until she woke up one morning. She was she was fully well. I have testimony. I, mean, I just don't want to spend time now bringing it out to read it for us. It's quite a long one. See, stop making excuses. You are old does not mean you shouldn't see. Age doesn't mean you can't run up the steps. I read something long ago that they said many of the problems we have with old age is just bad habits. That if I want the people were trying to say that, try and play like a child. I don't know whether you're getting my point. He said, play, play like children. I did something the other day in my house. I was alone. I did a flip. No, not the back of flip, you know, this one that you do. Oh, like, ah, yes. I decided to do it. I said, ah, because if you don't do this thing, now you'll forget. No, I, 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 this was just about three days ago. Is it three, two days ago? Just, you know, my wife just come in. in I, I said, let me do a flip before she comes. <laughs> and I will do more, I'm telling you. I told you that day I carried one, there's one uh, exercise equipment. I told my children, yeah, one of you, all of you young men, all right, come and try what daddy can try. They tried, they were sweating. I said, come, give it to me. And they saw me apply muscle. I said, good. There's a reason why I'm called daddy. I don't know if you should think that he's an old man. He's not. He's go- this guy's strength, I give him that 10 years. Go and practice. We'll meet in 10 years' time. I'm telling you. Hey, I will not, 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 not try him. <laughs> no, when you see, I see, have you seen? Okay, I don't know how many of you remember MC Hammer. I saw him dance recently. I couldn't believe that man is 62. My friend, my friend has showed it to me. I started researching that was this thing done years ago. I'm not kidding. I've not seen any, I see a lot of young people dance. I didn't see anybody that had this coordination. And that guy is 62. See, old age, you see, if you're sick, you're sick. Don't blame old age. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you get my point? This is their illnesses. Let's not make it, Louis. It's not age, it's illness. Call it the right name so you can believe God for it. Have you seen Michael Tyson walk out? No, seriously, I sent it to go and watch him walk out. That guy is 50, what, 56? Or is he 50? Is that 56 or 58? a small boy. I was going to fight one boy who's, I'm always Jake Paul. What is he? 24. And I was really sorry for that boy that if Tyson catches you, <laughs> he will beat you, he will almost kill you. I'm just saying those people to let you know that. And I've seen people, athletes who fell sick and they can't do anything. I'm just trying to say that illness is a problem. It's not age. Yes, sir. The other woman that they are pushing her videos around now, that ah, she's 73, she's exercising. I said, look, I thank God for her exercising, but go and check it closely. She reached that age without that exercise. Why can't she take it up now? Because she's fit. God has blessed her with sound health. And I think it's good. What she does is good. Going to the gym to go and work out, boxing, 73. I said, it's good. Encourage people. Somebody never even passed 60. You know, go hear what they get. 
Slow down, slow down. You now sit. You may be slow. I'm not saying, man, but don't make it look like 60 years is not the problem. Caleb, now your mate. Caleb was old, much older, and he was still fit. I think you go to battle, and you say, uh, uh, no. And you go to battle with sword and shield and spear. You have to have something. And that something is available. That's what I'm saying. Believe God for great things. I hope you're getting my point. Old age, I say all the time, is not a disease. It's not. It's not allowed to make you go blind. It's not allowed you to make you unable to get up. It's not allowed to make you, you know, you can't drive. He says, you know, he's, he's I'm an old man. Drive. Don't cultivate bad habits. Don't pamper yourself. If you are ill and you lie down for three days and everybody's cooking food for you, tell them, say, tomorrow, don't worry. I will come down and eat the food. Let's believe God for great things. Don't make excuses. Stop explaining something away. Anytime you give, make excuses, do you understand? You confirm, you affirm the thing, and that condition, that situation now has a right to stay in your life. I hope you're getting my point. That's why we don't make excuses. We say, you know, in my family, once you start saying like that, that thing will stay. Is it a good thing? No. Once you agree that it's not a good thing, then pray it away. Don't tell yourself, I'm genetically predisposed. Once you say it, it will stay. Pray it away. That's what I'm saying. Pray it away. Say this thing, I don't like it. And then don't let Satan be introducing bad things to you small, small. You're not getting used to it. Because something has not been working right for a long time. You assume it's normal. See, let me tell you something. I'm not telling you you will force yourself. It's not by power. It's by what? The spirit. Where, how is the spirit released from God's word? Through prayer. You go to God in prayer. Say, Lord, do this in my life as you have written. And then after that, you start speaking according to that word every day. Nobody's charging you for it. I'm not saying you should go around be harassing everybody. Hey, hey, hey. No. Stay, start with yourself. Face a mirror and give yourself a lecture. I mean, you know, I think we have more faith in medical science than medical science deserves. They've been helpful. They've been very helpful. It's very, very helpful. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Alright? But sometimes they prescribe things to people. Like Angelina Jolie said she did test. They said she has a mutation of one particular gene, which we call BRCA1 gene. She has a bad mutation. The auntie had breast cancer and something, I can't remember the family history she had. So what did she do? She went to hospital and removed both of her breasts. And there was not yet anything wrong with her. Now, med- yeah, no, no. It's, it's, um, medical is very reasonable, actually. Yeah, she didn't do anything irrational. If you're looking for a medical perspective. The one I saw it then, I said, I hope she knows that this is not all. The other one she did, did not make the news. She removed both of her ovaries too. Yes, she was, that's what we call castration for women, Right? Yeah, so they took out both ovaries and portion of the tubes. Because the same thing you are running away from the breast also happens there also. To be honest with you, I thought she did very well for what she has available to her. Do you get my point? The, the sons of this age are wiser in their own. So she went in full blast. This is what a lot of Christians make as a mistake. Like I've said many times, I don't take medicine does not mean you are you are you have faith. It doesn't mean it. It just means you don't like medicine or you can't pay. <laughs> or you like to or, or go to a church where they say you shouldn't take. Yes, some people go to churches and please, by the way, if you go to a church they say don't drink medicine. Eh? Go to another church. <laughs> you will see my reason in a moment. I know, yeah, Pastor Man, but you say you believe in divine healing. Not when somebody gives an instruction. When you are not taking medicine, it's not because you have faith, but because you are afraid to offend pastor. That's what I'm saying. Do you get my point? You can't by force me walk by your own faith. Do you like my Nigerian English? Yeah, you can't by force me. <laughs> you can't force me to walk by your own. It's not, it's not, um, let me put it like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, actually. I always like to say, tell the story of Kennedy Higgin. 
and he will tell you that his own wife, I've not seen many people in this life uh, historically now preach healing and practice it like he did. Not many people. Yet his own wife was sick. And the Lord told him, I think in a vision, or he heard the voice of the prophet, that is that's a prophetic word. He said, tell your wife to go and be operated upon, she will live and not die. Do you get my point? And he took his wife to hospital, checked her into hospital. And in fact, there was one woman I said he was praying for. He prayed and prayed, that the woman is not going to get with, not to the woman. What can you believe? The woman said, I can't believe that the doctor will do very well and I will heal her. I said, good, let's pray. And he prayed for her like that. And the miracle was clear. Even the doctors testified that this healing is a miracle. Even though she had her surgery. So nobody should intimidate you. Doctors are not evil spirits. They are messengers of God to match our faith. Because I've seen people say that, look, I keep on quoting what my brother Corey said. So somebody said, I'm believing God. He said, I forgot to ask, how? How? There is a how. If which message are you taking, you give me the names. How many times a day you will tell me? Who prescribed you will give it to me? When you are believing God, it's like that too. How are you believing God? One woman who, who gave me her testimony, how did she believe God? She took a short leave and traveled and went and sequestered herself for three days feasting on God's word. That's how she believed God. I hope you're getting my point. Some, if I like the way the Lord gave a testimony, he's like taking it like literal medicine. After eating, he'll bring out his Bible and read the scriptures and confess it three times a day. You can do things like that, they are good. I'll tell you that this is just my own prescription. You can do it that way. You can you put your own oil and pour it on your head. You can speak your own into a towel and wrap it on your body when you want to sleep. They all work. I mean, seriously, they are called faith extenders. All right? There's no law about it. Don't go and start selling towel in the market now. <laughs> Healing towel. There's nothing like that. Do you follow my question? People do all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that, me and somebody I prescribe, I say, okay, put a glass of water there. Read the scriptures. Read it. All right, when you finish, drink it. It's just like you're drinking medicine. That's what he did. In two months, he was cured of what doctors said was incurable. Do you get my point? All right? So there is nothing wrong, all right, with um, this faith. Ex- I mean, refusing to take medicine, but it must be that you really have the faith. If, it's, if your faith says, okay, I take the medicine, half, fine, I don't have a problem with it. But I just wanted to add, don't, don't say in our church they don't take medicine, so you will not take. Any church that can tell that she also, she, in our church we don't fall sick, they should go together. Do you get my point? Now, back to uh, Angela Jolie's story. No, no, I was going to say something. So when, we say, when you see things like that, we must attack it our own way. Not just, I'm believing God. Then I don't do anything. Like one brother said one day, if God wants to heal me, let, me he- let him heal me. And then he collapsed and died. I look back and I realize that that was very wrong of him. And it was wrong of me not to have helped him. Sat before me, beside me one day, just as I should feel his heart, I did. I never felt a more irregular heart than that in my life. So I looked at him like, what? And this guy was full of energy. He told me, say he has a heart condition. You do? I, I, I don't know whether I was the one who made that statement to, or somebody reported that he said, that he just left this thing, that if God wants to heal him, let him heal him. And then one day he was walking, and he collapsed, and the heart misfired. And he died. And they tried to resuscitate him, and nothing could be done. And I look back and say, no. He was wrong, I was wrong. You don't just leave it carelessly. You deal with it. You deal with it deliberately and decisively. Say, what will it take? We give it to it. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's what you're supposed to do. You deal with it deliberately. Don't just leave it there if God wants to. You know what God is saying? If you want to. I think God is also answering him. Then he came to Jesus one day. If you can do anything. Jesus said, what did you say? If I can. It's if you can believe. It's if you can believe. It's if you can believe. What should he have done? Of course, like I said, I was wrong. He was wrong. 
What was your own part? I didn't do anything when he told me. I'm not saying I had the magic cure, but I should have prescribed for him the right thing. That the boy will have two choices here. Which one are we going with? Instead of living it like this, what did the doctor say? What can they do? This is what they say. Why are you not following it? Is it that you can't afford it? If it's the problem of money, we raise money. I don't know whether you get my point. I don't, see, see. I've lived long enough. I've followed the word of God, the word of faith, word of healing and all of that. I have my personal experience. I've seen things happen. And I'm telling you what I'm saying based on all of this. A lot of people tell you they are believing God, they are not believing God. They are afraid of what the doctors are, uh, doctors are going to do. Sometimes, you see, medical treatment is annoyingly expensive. No, I'm telling you, you just wonder that, wait. And the annoying part for me personally is that the more expensive the drug, the less it does. Not because the drug is not powerful, but the most expensive drugs are reserved for incurable things. That's, that's the reason. It's not because the drug in itself is useless. But they've tried all kinds of things. When they attack some... I mean, Sometimes when we're having some meetings, okay, this person is having back pain. Maybe we should send for radiotherapy for the spine to control the pain. You're talking 1.5 million. The way to be said, eh, if you're not inside, you think you just, just go there, buy it in the shop, put radiotherapy there, and then you go. They book you for it. They weigh you, they dress you, they calculate, they do all kinds of things, and then you pay a huge amount of money just to control pain. They're not curing you. That money will treat a whole, a whole school for malaria. You know now, and to cure all of them. And to give them insecticide, treat them so that they will not have malaria again for the next six months. It's not cheap. Just by the smaller side. You better give some credit to federal government. If you know how much money they pay, they pay for poor people every day. Every day. The social health worker will talk to you, prove that you can't afford it. They send your name. They wire you millions of naira into your account. You can't take the cash, but you just go. Be paying for things here and there. And the way the money was so finished, you wouldn't believe it. The thing is very expensive. So a lot of people say they run away. I keep on telling people, see all this noise? Look, this is not the bias, it's information. Eh? Orthodox medical science is 50 times better than traditional medicine. I'm sorry, not 50. 100,000 times. What is 50 times? They can't even be compared. They'll be sending you root from China, you'll be swallowing it. Are you okay? They can't be compared. If a man, a woman who is not trained is selling you medicine, don't buy it. You're not trained to make a very ignorant, dangerous doctor in six years. He doesn't know anything. Did you hear what I said? At the end of six years, I will not let that guy save me Panadol. Yeah, he doesn't know anything. Now, you see where I'm going. Six years of reading day and night, yet I consider him totally ignorant. When I talk to him, one day I talked to one guy, one lady, one of my colleagues. So we discussed some things. I said some things. I like her. You're a consultant. Now. <laughs> she looked at some guy. This is get great. Oh, I said it's true. This is a specialist. Having been trained for more than 10 years total. 12 years. Here she spoke. I'm like, how can you be this ignorant? I have a friend of mine. He's a professor of medicine. In, you know, in uh, one university a bit far away from here. One day I called him. Usually I do that. People ask me for advice. I said, okay, this area. This is what I think. But let me ask the specialist. You know what he said? What is wrong with these young cardiologists? He said, these guys are dead. Now, I, I don't know whether I get my point. He wa- the prescription given was given by a specialist. I gave to an older one. He said, this guy is a fool. Why would he prescribe this for a human being? Ah. Zink, zink. So you now see one guy who didn't finish secondary school selling medicine and you buy it. The ones that have passed, did everything, have been trained and trained and trained. They are giving me- so My relatives come me sometimes. They say, doctor gave them this. I said, I say, how old is he? Looks like he's 20. I said, 20 does I have my reasons. I said, 20 does me. Seriously. And these are people who have read book. They've read book. They've insulted them. Or girls have abused them. They've, their brain is on fire. That's how complicated life is. Then the man who didn't go to school will be selling medicine and you will buy. Can't you see that the, your sins are catching up with you? <laughs> now keep on telling people. You go on the road, a banker will give you medicine and you drink. And you're like, what is wrong with you? The annoying one are those ones that carry caps and go on the road. And people will stop them. 
See, I'm not kidding. I have colleagues who've done research on how those people are destroying people's kidneys. I can't don't get it. Please love your life more than this. Before you swallow anything, it's not better that wears a coat that's trained. Go to rural area where their coat be deceiving this population. And please, hey God, I'll get to my message. Stop going online if you are not trained. There's a lot of rubbish out there. It takes skill to find the right information. You want to treat yourself. Type it to chat GPT. You don't know that chat GPT. Don't say I didn't want you. Me and uh, a junior is the other day we were talking. He said, he said chat GPT, who's Pastor Banky's wife? He said, my wife's name is in cage. <laughs> Thank God my wife was not there. My wife would look like her. I thought you were a husband or one wife. <laughs> it takes skill hmm, to pick out the relevant and necessary information from that information overloaded superhighway. So those don't go around there picking information anyhow. If, the way I'm going with this whole talk is eh, if you are going to swallow medicine, please, I'm begging you, let it be described by people who are trained. I hope you get my point. Please. And this modern day, we don't have a problem with asking another opinion. If one doctor finishes telling everything, go to another one. Say, the other guy said, this is what we're going to do. Do you agree with him? He said, yes, I think everything he's saying is reasonable. Then follow them. Well, I'm good. I don't want people to tell me that I believe in God. They will leave medicine and then go and be buying leaf. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm going to do this whole talk. I don't want people to tell me they are believing in God. You will leave the hospital and go to the traditional medicine place. You're not believing God. You've just changed doctor for a, for a, from a good one to a useless one. Because it's cheaper. Anybody who can, in this modern day, I'm telling you, anybody who's serving you anything to drink, to swallow, hmm? who cannot tell you the name of the contents, don't follow him. If you go to the proper doctor, they will tell you this medicine contains this and this. This one is 75 milligrams. This one is 25 milligrams. Because of your body weight, you are going to take one and a half tablets. Not just push it to you. Say, ah, this one, uh, like one man says, this is Omorov. Um, um, this is one, uh, 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 um, um, quick, quick, quick. Um, uh, this. Uh. <laughs> you, you remember him? How many people were in Benin those days? The guy says, the Balogun general of traditional medicine in Africa. Please, you know, I've, I've said this again and again. Don't be deceived with NAFDAQ number. The rock will explain to us those days that NAFDAQ number just means that we are saying there's no poison inside. We are not saying it works. See, the, what they use to give traditional people NAFDAQ number is not the same criteria they use for giving proper medicine. Proper medicine, they, you have to prove the efficacy that you are claiming. Traditional people don't have to prove it. If they, they, they market a medicine that can make you two inches taller in six weeks, they are allowed to make that claim. And they will get their NAVDAC number. As long as NAVDAC sees that they don't carry toilet water and put inside. They will verify that they pack it well and it's clean. You that wants to grow two inches taller in six months, it's your problem. It's your problem. They don't really care. So when anybody comes and harass you, NAVDAC number. But when a proper hospital tells you that this drug does this, they have to prove it. In case you don't know, on the average, it costs them $500 million to prove each one. And they bring a new drug out, the average cost is $500 million U.S. dollars. Average. Because some of them, they've blown a lot of money, it fails, they throw it in the dustbin. They start again, it fails, they put another one in the dustbin. Finally, they get one that works. When they average it, for each new one that works, $500 million have gone down the drain. In the dollar of more than 20 years ago, that's what I'm telling you. I don't know about how much it is today. So please, I'm going over, I've, I know I've said these things before. So if you want to believe God, it's not the same thing as exchanging well-trained doctor with well-refined medicine for people who don't know what they are doing. Believing God involves only one thing, the word of God. Do you get my point? It does not involve ginseng or rutubaga. It does not in, involve uh, aloe vera. Do you get what I'm saying? It wants to collect grass, and you start cooking it, just go to a proper hospital. Do you follow my point? <laughs> but, let's not sit on that I wanted to correct some people. Let's sit on it. But the word of God is alive. Amen? Amen. It works. How are you believing God? You say, I wake up every morning. 
before everybody wakes up by 5 a.m. I listen to it. I take, okay, this series what I've been doing. I listen to it for 30 minutes. Then I recite the scriptures and I confess the word and I give thanks. And I do that twice a day, morning and evening. I know you are believing God. I'm starting my course of treatment by taking a leave. I'm going to be gone for one week. These are the books. When I talk with people on things like this, I say, no, we are going to take treatment. I have treatment for them. My treatment is only things like how to work for God. I wrote that one. Following God's plan for your life. Ken Hagen wrote that one. I give you all the... I, pack, I can give you like 10 books. Be studying it. That's the treatment I give. That's spiritual treatment. Read Psalm 23 from the beginning to the end and from the end to the beginning. That's what we are talking about. Learn to give thanks. Learn to set your life. Learn to cleanse every, you know, offense in your soul. Look, as a Christian, in fact, let me start my message for today. That one was just trying to catch up what I said. Look, now, we, we did this some time ago, but I didn't finish everything. So let me just get into the main thing I want to share with us today. The Lord is good. We're talking about properly believing God. Believing God doesn't mean you dictate everything you want for the Lord. Believe, believing God means you believe what he has said. If he says something, you believe it. If he says, I'm the Lord that heals you, you believe it. If he says, for this cause, many are sick, are weak and sick amongst you, and many sleep, believe it. That's what it means to believe God. So when people say they are believing God, their faith is only halfway. What if God only does good? The devil only, is the only one that does bad. God is totally good. The devil is totally bad. See, it's true that God is totally good. However, if you cross him, he can afflict you. That's what it means, to believe God. Now, I'm not going to make you afraid of God, but I want you to know where to go and ask for help. I don't know whether I get my point. That's what I'm trying to say. That who will help you now? Because you know the truth? If God shuts a door, nobody can open it. If God opens a door, no enemy can shut it. Do you get my point? When Jonah drowned, only God could wake him up. Do you follow my point? You have to, that's, what I, that's my own preaching. I'm not trying to paint God as a wicked person. He said, don't make God look like somebody who's looking for who to hammer. No. But if you decide to provoke him into the hammering zone, hammer, you shall be hammered. And then when you have been hammered, what did the Bible say? He has wounded us. What's the next thing? He's the one that will heal us. That's what I'm trying to make. If you recognize that he wounds, that one, in fact, for me, it's easier to believe that I will be healed. You know why? Because his anger is bought for a moment. But his mercy is everlasting. So if I suffered intense pain in his hand, I can be smiling. Why? Because when he brings comfort, he won't just bring comfort of physical health, he will bring prosperity with it. He always overcompensates. So he does. He co- ah, original compensator. Job, you lose things. Over less than a year, he suffered like this. At the end of the day, the lifetime Job had left, God doubled it. Seriously, trust me. All the goods he had, he doubled it. Within a few years, Job's sorrows were a distant memory. So I don't have a problem believing that God afflicts. Because that's not the way the focus is. The focus is that we know to get deliverance from his hand. I've told the story many times of, um, what's the name of our guy? Uh, oh, the one that wrote Courage to Conquer. There's a summer. At the age of 17 or so, he left home. He wanted to be rich. <laughs> God said, listen. If you think you belong to yourself, forget that thing. Before you were born, your mother and I discussed, and she gave you to me. You can imagine Samuel saying, I don't like this temple. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be saying the tabernacle. Everybody is saying, I want to be a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Eli would just say, Come, come, come. Do you like yourself? His mother would just come and say, if you like that, me, I, I gave you up long ago. You're just on your own. When they gave birth to you, my friend, we gave it to God. God said, you're going to be a prophet. So leave that thing. You will prophesy. Look, 
Five from now to tomorrow. See this prophesying. Thou shall profit. You shall profit. <laughs> you must prophesy. That is it. That's what Lesser Samurai did. A year, less than a year after he left home, he was back home on his deathbed. God said, you know, the devil, God said, look, listen, what a devil of me. That guy will listen to what I'm saying. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Now I obey your word. The guy woke up one day. Whether he was asleep, he doesn't even know. He looked on his right, he saw a big Bible. He looked on his left, he saw a casket, exactly his size. You know, there's a way you will have revelation to know what's your size. <laughs> he saw the casket. He said, this one and my own pussy. This one is my size. You know, there are dreams you need to pray to interpret. There are some, they interpreted you before you even dreamed them. The moment he saw the, he knew what the Lord was saying. God said, pick one. The guy picked the Bible. And he was healed. That's what it means to believe God. Believe and to believe means to obey. You can't believe without obeying. He believed. That man lived to be about 90 years of age. 70 years later, he was still alive. Going all over the world. God prospered his ministry. He made kings rise up to greet him. He honored him everywhere in the world. The sufferings of those days disappeared in a short while. Became distant memories. Let's bear these things in mind. Where I want to just tie this up is this. I want to explain certain principles to us again. First Corinthians chapter 11. It's, of course, we read this, we've read this one a, a few times. Now, let me remind us again. Your name is Joseph. Oh, you should know that. The reason why you are in prison is not the reason why Mufta was in that prison. Who's Mufta? I don't know. One guy in the prison with you. I hope you're getting my point. He said, but what if Mufta gives his life to Christ? Immediately after that day, God will change the reason why he's in jail. Yeah. After that, he can change the past. He may still be in that jail, and God will say, now nah, he's in prison for another reason. And the day God is tired of him being in prison, God will discharge him. And you will see Muftal leave the jail before Joseph. Why? The time for Joseph's deliverance has not come. So whatever is happening to you is a different reason. The whole world can have Apollo. If you have it, it's for a different reason. Your one can be like, you look in the wrong direction too much. Yes. Or it can be that they've been telling you all this while. Beef your, up your faith, you refused. This is supposed to be for you a wake-up call. You have to learn, see, by faith we understand. Without faith, Christians have no understanding. Without faith, we are walking in darkness and in ignorance. Without faith, we don't have understanding. What is faith? Understanding the word of God. Using the word of God to decode and explain your life. That's what faith is. Faith is using the word of God to explain and decode the events of your life. It's happened to, look, the way I reason, eh? I'm going on the road, I have a flat tire. I decide, look, what does this flat tire mean? It has a meaning. So the devil didn't want me to travel, is he mad? When did I become the one that he decides what is, my life is about? No. Okay, maybe he's the one that punctured my tire. I, I have to ask, why? What on earth happened that I allowed the devil to come and puncture my tire? That's the question. I'm not the devil. He wants to puncture. He always wants to puncture my tire. The guy has never been happy that my tires are not down. Every time I start my car, he's looking at the tires. The tire will go down. I do answer him. Like I say all the time, see, this ground you are stepping on, let's, for this, if you are wearing shoes, inside your shoes, if you start counting the bacteria inside there, you wouldn't believe. There are so many. My wife will worry me, have you washed your hands in my mind? Wash my hand. Whether I wash it or not, I know the amount of bacteria that I am in here. By breathing alone, I've collected enough bacteria for a day. Now, so life be. Most of them are totally harmless. Some of them are very, ha- they are very, they are good. That's why God said, don't circumcise boys until eight days. Because they need the first few days to collect enough bacteria from the environment. To help them make vitamin K. Some of them do good. Some of them are very harmful. Both the ones that are harmless and the ones that are harmful. 
and you encounter them every day, they have one major problem. Your immune system is intact. Do you follow my point? Let me give an example now. Assuming today you have a ball on the finger. You know what these doctors will say? You have, is it? You have a foreign cold. They will give you medicine. They will puncture it and you go home. Hmm. You come the next day, you have a boy here. Ah. They may not say anything. By the time you come the next week, you have another one here. They will run a full profile on you. Why are you the only one on the street? <laughs> yes. They stop asking. They don't say, ha, ah, you have a virulent. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, are you the only one on the street? No. Next thing. Yeah, give us more urine. Give us more blood. Give us more this. They, draw, they are drawing juices out of you. Send them to the laboratory, analyze everything. Say, ah, this is the problem. The bacteria worrying you become secondary. They now identify why are you particularly susceptible to them. Which is why, see all these pastors are always telling you, which is afflicting you. They are very useless doctors. I know what I'm saying. Any pastor telling you which is your problem does not know this job. He should come. Let's give him coaching. Eh? We don't we won't talk to him. Just put him, let him be reading book over there. You read here for, for about six months. You will anoint you again. You're going to start ministry again. If we hear which in your mouth for two years, we'll suspend you out of ministry. Because you are deceiving people. The people of God cannot be afflicted by witches if their life is intact. Do you follow my point? So we focus on the intactness of their lives, not on the fact that there are witches in the environment. That's a very useless doctrine people preach every day. So for us Christians, that's the point I'm making. There is an explanation. And that's what we focus on. That's what we focus on. When we are solving our problems, we're not just trying to solve the problem, we're asking questions by them. We're asking questions by them. We're not just trying to solve the problems, we're asking questions. I said you open somewhere, right? First Corinthians chapter 11, yes. So Paul said, look, there are reasons why things go wrongly with Christians. Now, we won't read everything. The whole story starts from that verse 23. That's this portion of what we're, um, what we're trying to look at here. Verse 23. We were talking about the communion table. He said, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. Please, you'll see me jump a few lines to save time. I want to just get to the main thing we are trying to read. That on the night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took, when he had given thanks, verse 24, he broke, he broke it and said that he took bread. He broke it and said, this is my body. In the same way, he took the cup also. He said, this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now, let me slow down now. 27, therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, shall be guilty, now notice this, of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Now notice that he is to examine himself. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly, that is, Examine himself as to how am I judging the body rightly? What are the things that are negative concerning assessing the body of Christ rightly in me? He said, for this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. That is what we call die. But Paul was emphatic that Christians, and that's another thing. Those who say that uh, somebody was not a Christian, the word sleep is not used for unbelievers. Later, maybe God helping us, we'll talk about it. The hope of resurrection, you see, is real. Mm, it's real. It's real. You have a loved one, a Christian, a believer in Christ Jesus, who has, let me just use the word, die. It's just the person traveled. That's not a joke. You may not see the person again in this life, that's in your own flesh. But one day, you guys will hug each other long time. I know you have been fine. I was going to say, how have you been? Ah, you go be again. To depart and be with the Lord. That's what Paul said is happening to them. I know what Paul said about it. It's just a little better than the no good weather. 
to depart and be with the Lord. It's just a little bit better than Abuja climate. Is that what he said? What did he say? It's far better. If a Christian dies, cry is good to mourn, but say don't mourn like because if he's a non-believer, more no. <laughs> you won't see that guy again. Preach the gospel to people so you can see them again. So he said, many sleep. Look, Paul was emphatic. You know why Paul used to do that? God showed him things. Literally, when Jesus rose from the dead, he brought some people alive with him. And they went home, visited loved ones. And many saw them. No, Paul, God gave him. <laughs> if you listen to a man like Sadhu, you will believe some things. He will tell you that there was a time we went to somewhere in South America, that time when we uh, Guatemala, and he was walking down the road, and somebody was hurrying to catch up with him. And he paused to wait for the person. And he saw it was the same, to give the name of one prophet, that Jeremiah brought him a word. And they discussed. If you listen to Bible scholars, they will tell you that the person, not all of them, but the person that was showing John what would take place was a prophet of old. Not an angel, the way you and I think about it. was one, and the, 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 the person made that statement. When he bowed to worship, said, don't do that. I am one of fellow servants like you. So please, eh? when, it, when Paul used the word sleep, he was emphatic. He has seen people who slept and woke up. But we, most of us have only seen people that died and we buried them. But he saw people that slept and woke up. All right, so bear that in mind. But let's stick with what, what we're discussing here. He said, for this cause, for this reason, many among you are weak. Many among you are sick. And in number. So many. Now notice how many are, look at the quantity. Many are weak. Many are sick and in number. Some have even passed on or slept. So he said, What is it? But if we, we judge ourselves rightly, we will not be judged. That is, what the experience was what? Judgment. He said, But when we are judged, we are disciplined by Satan. By who? I, just want, I want us to stop magnifying the devil. That's why. We are disciplined by the Lord. So that we will not be condemned along with the world. Now, what am I trying to say? Let's just stick with this. The reason why things happen to Christians is not the same reason it happens to the world. That's the first thing I wanted to emphasize to us. For my, I'm just looking at my time. I don't want to spend too much extra time. So let me quickly get there. Here he said, what are you supposed to do? Judge the body rightly. Examine yourself. Now, I'm going to broaden it beyond that, okay? Because, you see, Paul was addressing a particular issue at this point. He did not say that is the only problem. I just brought that one to let us know that sometimes, because of what we are doing wrongly, we are afflicted. It's a matter of fact. And listen to me, you cannot, see, you cannot in the midst, midst of affliction not examine yourself. No, you must always do that. You must always. Don't tell me you are walking by faith. And you don't do that. We don't walk by desire or stubborn determination to get our own results. Faith is believing and obeying what God has said. If he said many are sick and weak because they do some things wrongly, it is right for you to ask, is it possible I'm doing something wrongly? I hope you're getting my point. It's very important. And what people do wrongly, they are not... Look, I don't mean you went and shot somebody and collected his car. Because some people think that they must do something very terrible to fall into this category. In fact, you know the funny thing? Here, what many of us would have thought was not the problem was Paul was saying that was a big issue. Not rightfully discerning the body of Christ. Not treating each other with consideration. Simple things... Now, this is very interesting. You want to take communion? There's a loaf of bread. Three of you come first. Before another three, and you have friends, you finish the whole loaf. That's why some of you are falling sick. That's what Paul said. He told them next time, wait for each other. If you're hungry, eat at home. Don't get there and behave as if there are not 20 people coming for this communion. That's what he's saying. Don't get there and behave as if you're the only person. There are 20 other people. Be considerate. 
Realize that this is supposed to bind all of you together. I want to say something very funny. Not funny as it make you laugh. But you say, why did you go there? But I will go there. Some of you, eh, you go to church. They say only people in this category who are members of our domination can take to this communion. Now I want to give you an instruction. If you're a member of that co- congregation, don't take that day. You see what I said? Looks like it's not clear. <laughs> Let me give an example now. Assuming that we have a ministry here called School of Prayer Ministries. Okay? I want to now take communion. And it's a, we have a program that day. So a lot of people come. So maybe normally we are 50. But now we are like 150. We we'll now make an announcement. Only those who are members of this ministry, who are in the state of grace, can take this communion today. Now if you are a member of that king, uh, school of prayer ministries, now this is what I'm telling you. That day, you two don't take when I say, what's happening? He said, the communion is not in the state of grace. It cannot be. Once you cannot rightfully descend the body, I won't take. That's my reason. Next time when it's only us, when you will not make that announcement, I will take. But once you make that announcement, you have divided the body, I will not participate. One day, one big man in their church, in my kingdom of ministries, now we're doing communion as an example. And I say, if you know you are going to leave this ministry one day, don't take this communion. I said, now nah, I'm giving you people instruction. Anybody listening to me? If you are there that day and you're not planning to leave, don't take. If you're planning to leave, don't take. If you're not planning to leave, don't take. If you don't know, don't take. Just don't take. <laughs> Why? They, had, they are dividing the body. Those who leave this ministry and those who don't, they are still part of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would the only ministry in this country or in this world. I think people have turned communion to juju. So let's take communion. If you know you are the one that stole that and don't take. Even if I'm not the one that took it, I will not take. This is not juju. Use communion, turn it to, it to manipulate people, to get truth out of people. If you take this thing, now if you don't, if you, are, if you are the one, you will go mad. You that's giving it, you will go mad too. Two of us are going to go mad. Nonsense. What do you think you have a <laughs> Use communion for divination. Respect the body of Christ too. When it's communion time, know what it is. Every Christian is allowed to participate. Leave it like that. You can give general instructions. People should not be walking in sin and come there. We, we have discussed that before. But please, don't use it to check who's told. This is not divination time. But now, why am I sitting on this? Because when we're talking about people should examine themselves, many of us are waiting to examine those who stole NMPC money. They are the ones you are thinking of. No, you. Just not rightfully descending the body of Christ. It's an issue. Yeah. Worthy of becoming weak and becoming sick. Please, I hope you are getting my point. Now, like I told you for time's sake, I'll just rush to some things I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to know. All right? For example, bearing grudges, not walking in love, walking in anger, jealousy, Talking too much with your mouth about things you don't know about. Yeah, sometimes that's what, that is why people have problems. I feel sorry for preachers who lie with the word of God. They will have mouth problems. That one is just, is, and that's being kind. Listen, as a Christian, one of the ways you get affliction out of your life is to remove everything. Look, for example, you are sick, you are not talking to your wife, you are not going to get well. See, you'll be there for a long time. I know what I'm telling you. You will change your mind. It's when, they, when you're about to go unconscious. You say, oh, girl, it's not that bad. <laughs> That's why you know that it's not that bad. I, you think the angel is playing with you? Angel say, look, oh boy, you won't eat beep, in this house until you reconcile with your wife. What she did was bad. You, what you did to God, was it good? You know, many of us, eh, we have seen more against God than our wives have seen against us. And we have not died. I want to kill somebody. <laughs> and what I'm telling you is not a joke. I like one story. They said, um, well, it was an book, I read it. About one, one, past, one man, a deacon. Now, these are the things people do, and they fall sick. I don't know why we preach some funny things we preach. I say it's, devil. it's not devil. This deacon was very rich. So, he was the one that gave most money they spent in that church. So the church wanted to spend, build a new church. Hmm? A new auditorium. 
So this man said they should be in a particular way. So the pastor said, well, let's ask the other deacons and elders and the whole church what model they preferred. Most people said they preferred the other one. So the man said, no, they should do it his own way. Now, please, if you want to be poor, have that attitude. Because God said, what's giving you this mouth now? Is it not money? But you know what happened to him? He had pneumonia before there was antibiotics. Some people won't like what I'm about to say, but I will say it. God dashed him in pneumonia. Some people say, the devil, whether it's the devil or God, he got pneumonia. And it was caused by the division he was operating inside the church. The anger he was working with, the pride, number one, was the matter of pride. So when he was now about to die, he finally sent for the pastor. He wanted to die in peace. He wasn't trying to get well. The doctors had given up that they don't think he would live beyond midnight. That night, the third was his last night. So, okay, let me make peace with everybody. So he called all the elders of the church. They came to his house. And he said he was a very, very rich man. Very, very big palatial house. They all came. So he now said he just wanted to apologize to the pastor. Because he wanted to have the pastor sacked for not listening to him. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. He apologized to everybody. Just wanted them to forgive him. So they forgave him. So the pastor now said that they should just bring oil. He anointed him with oil. That's another story. Do you know the man got well on the spot? He got well on the spot. This is somebody who he asked so that they can pray for him so that he can die in peace. It reminds me of the angel standing in front of Balaam. The moment he confessed his sins and asked for forgiveness. Look at what James said. Let's read it. James chapter 5. Verse 13. Are you there? Verse 13. I'm going to read about five verses or four. He said, Is there anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him. Please follow this. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. Are you following that? And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Please, this has to be read in context. That is, the man that's being prayed for must confess his sins. The anointing with oil will not forgive him his sins. Sometimes we read it, we don't, we don't bind it. He said, therefore, confess your sins to one another. When he is sick, when the elders come, let him confess his sins. Thank God for those who believe in the operation of the Spirit. Because sometimes the prophet will speak up and let you know what is wrong. Hey, by the way, can I go there again? That is the job of prophets. What did I say? That is the job of prophets. Prophets are not supposed to be... All these night VG people are not prophets. Prophets don't operate at night. I, I, I don't mean they don't prophesy at night, but they are not night VG people. They are normal people. They can prophesy at 9 a.m. They can prophesy at 12 noon. They can pray at 1.30 and prophesy. You don't have to go and camp with them from 10 o'clock to 5 a.m. You know, we have this funny habit. Job, the one is not difficult. It's not of God. Some woman the other was talking to that. Holy Spirit came upon him. Now pray seven hours every day. So they said, they said, when do you sleep? He said, 7 a.m. I said, Mama, you don't sleep. Why are you saying? You don't, don't bother. Say it shows that the work he has to do is plenty. I said, I beg, let's hear, let's hear what... So God doesn't hear that during the day. If you, if you are awake 12, 12 midnight to 7 a.m., I, I hope that's the only work you do. Because if you are working for me, you come to my office, you now not, not, nod your head. I'm going to fire you the next day. You're going to now be telling us, hey, you know, Pastor, we're praying the whole night. Then go and work for that church. You know, Christians just like, you know, it has to be, it must be painful. If it's not painful, God will not hear. Hannah, God heard her after she ate. You that will refuse to pray until you have gone hungry. Why well, you think God will answer because of that? You know why He won't answer? Because you are going to share the glory. You now come to church and say, Praise God. You know that they will not declare the seven days fast. They didn't eat at all for seven days because the half of the glory you have collected. Half. Complete half. Complete half. Next thing, your pastor will now put you in charge of fasting counseling. Those who want to know how many days to fast will have their problems solved. 
See so and so person. And you now be feeling important with yourself because don't worry, your next problem is in front. <laughs> your next problem, that one you will fast for two years. I will not even say <laughs> When you're about to die, you, you will say, God, because I beg now. Hey, then I will not answer you. Say, if you are hear nonsense testimony from your mouth, go there and say, I wanted to die. Just say, God, please now. Do you know what happened to Jonah? You think he was fasting in the, <laughs> in the fish of the, in, in the belly of the fish? He wasn't fasting, don't die. You say, God, ah, if I die, how will I praise you? You know, it's living people that can praise you. Now. Okay, okay, I'm dead, Abby. Who oh, go to the Navy? God say, what are you saying? Say, if you give me one more chance, I will go to the Navy. Say, I'll come out. And the guy land for the Navy. He will go. That's another thing. Some people, in fact, I'm happy I mentioned Jonah. See, it is not this your long fasting that's going to get you answers to prayer. It's obedience to what God is saying to you. If your name is Jonah, you will drown, you will die. Fish will swallow you and digest you, except you agree to go to Nineveh. This road you are on to Tashish is why nothing is working in your life. Your kidney is not working, liver is not working, heart is not working, stomach is not working. If you had these organs, will you walk when they are carrying you to Tashish? Seriously. I need to get into that. Because you see, one of the, let me tell you something. If you go in Isaiah chapter 54, all right? He said, No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. What's the next line he said? He said, this is the heritage of who? The servants of God. And their righteousness is of me. Now, you know, when I was in school, I learned faith, faith, faith. And we are sons. We are not servants. We are sons. We are not servants. Have you heard that thing before? I hope you know it's not true. I hope you very, you know it's not true. Young people like to believe when they go to campus. Once you grow older, you will stop believing rubbish. Don't worry. First year on campus can be believing nonsense. If you see any pastor that has graduated from school after three, he believes in rubbish. That guy is hopeless. Come, you, can't, you shouldn't be believing nonsense once you have reached a particular age. <laughs> young boys, when they are in school, they can't believe rubbish. You see, them, you see young boys preaching. Hey, praise God. And the Greek says, <laughs> just say, don't be angry. Don't be angry. Say, just wait. He will soon calm down. He will soon calm down. Don't worry. He will soon calm down. <laughs> We, we, just, we just find one revelation. Oh, praise God. I just found out. Oh, if servants can explain this, experience this, we who are sons, we are sons, we are sons. Oh, we are sons. I, I just look at their face and say, don't worry. We were there too. There was a time I was a son also, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> My brain don't rearrange now. Now I'm a servant. You know what makes me laugh? Like These boys that I don't even know is that they want shouting song, song, song. The person who taught you sonship, Paul, what did he call himself? Born servant. Literal, actually, literal Greek, born slave. That's how he called himself. Now you now, because they gave you two, two, two chapters of the Bible in, uh, in King James, we can't hear what they gave. Anyway, so I believe, <laughs> I believe those things that, that time myself. But what shocked me was that the Bible says this is the heritage of whom? Servant. So I was like, is it that they don't know? That sons are superior. So now that I'm modified, if servants can have this, what are we going to have as sons? Hallelujah. We are going to have more. Because they come here, come here. I said is the heritage of what? Servants. Because we all know there are two kinds of sons. What are their names? Serving sons and prodigal sons. Thank you. You have prodigal sons and you have serving sons. This is not the heritage of prodigal people. Whether you call yourself son, or daughter, or relative. It doesn't matter. Once you are a prodigal, you will lose your clothes. You will eat with pigs. Look, everything will scatter around you. Listen, your security is in being a serving son. That's why he hid it. He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Their righteousness, their defense, their vindication is of me. What protects you is that you tell yourself, I am going wherever God says I should go. I am going to do exactly what God says I should do. I'm not planning my own life. I'm discovering his own plan and I'm working in them. It's not whether I like it or I don't like it. It's whether I know it or I don't. That's the issue. It's not like. It's for me to get to know. It's not about liking. It's not every job I do. It's not every place I live. I don't just leave places when I feel like. 
If God says go to Nineveh, I better go there. It's better to risk my life in Nineveh than to think I'll be safe going to Tashish. See, let me just tell you. See, when you're a Christian, let me say it again. Eh? Christianity is not by force. You can be a Muslim and you can still be president in Nigeria. It doesn't matter. You can, visit, you can still be a refinery as a Muslim in Nigeria. You can be the richest man in Africa. The richest black man in the world. And you're not even a Christian. And Christians will still be praying for you. Are we? Yes, Don't you pray for our head of state? Yes. Didn't you not pray just now for some people God is using to deliver the economy out of the hand of oppressors? And none of these two people we prayed for today are Christians. So being a Christian is not by force. You can still prosper in this life you are not. It's not the key to prosperity. If you join a gang, you can prosper. Look, you know that? Yes. You know what Christianity is? Serving the Lord. Having the hope of eternal life. Yes, sir. Having the hope of a resurrection body. You know what Christianity is? Is dying to self and doing the will of God in Christ Jesus. That is what Christianity is. Once you have accepted it, work with it fully. If you leave Egypt, face the promised land no matter what it takes. Otherwise, you will die in the wilderness. That's what God has said. You want peace for your soul. You want healing for your body. You place that body on the altar. Like I said to you earlier, we're laughing about it, but as a matter of fact, Samuel, you must prophesy. You can't be a farmer. There's nothing you can do about it, Samuel. If you decide not to follow that high priesthood and prophetic office, your body will decay on you because it's not useful anymore. You can be arguing with me that I don't know faith. I've told you faith is not desire. It's obedience to the revealed truth of God. That's what faith is. There is no Samuel that will survive and live long in health and prosper like Jesus said he should through the words of John. If you will not agree to be that high priest and prophet in Israel. Because you were born, before you were born, God and your mother arranged. Because I want to send a prophet today. He said, a body you have prepared for me. Sacrifice and offering did not desire. Then I, I, I said, behold, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. I come to do your will. I desire to do your will. Thy law is within my heart. You can't be facing with your body a different direction from the law that is in your heart. It's not allowed. God always give, gives conditions for long life. Desire is not one of them. Desire is what makes you come to learn the conditions. You know that's what he said? Who is it that desires long life? He gives you the conditions. Let him keep his mouth from speak, speaking evil. Let him speak peace and pursue it. You no, know, I see some people in this life. I say, this guy, eh? how you manage to live long? Eh? He needs extra mercy. Always causing trouble everywhere you go. Always lying, never bearing for, you know, truthful witness. You have to keep your mouth from speaking evil, from speaking deceit. You have to seek peace and pursue it. And you must honor your father and your mother. God gives conditions. Don't the funny thing? Long life has con- let me tell you something about divine promises. Every people say some promises are conditional, some are not conditional. Hey, wait, 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 wait. There's no promise that has to do with you personally that's not conditional. There's none. The ones that are not conditional are the ones that does not tie to anybody. Like seed time and harvest shall not cease. Cold and heat will alternate. If that's the promise you are talking about, it's not conditional. I, I, I hope you're getting my point. That if, if God says that um, I will never um, destroy the earth with water again. Hey, it doesn't concern you now. There's nothing you can do to alter that one. He has taken a personal oath. It's an arrangement between him and Noah. You can say that. But there is none that's a blessing to you that's not conditional. There's none. There is none. There is none. You may not know the conditions. Many of those conditions you are fulfilling. Not knowing. Occasionally when you break some of them, he has to call your attention. For example, this honor your father and your mother. He has said it clearly. If you want to prosper and you want it to be well with you, if you want to live long, now go and find out how you do it. Too. I was listening to this lady yesterday. Yesterday night, my wife and I were watching her because they are with my friend, Pastor Corrigan, so go to ministry, um, the windows. And the lady was talking about her life. I said, now, wow, people, they see things. So. That she used to watch her father. She preached openly, so I can say, have you? That she used to watch her father beat her mother. 
She hated her father. That is, she went to school. Do you want to see the man again? You know the truth? That's the funny thing about this life. That's how Satan will just collect your destiny and throw it away. Of course, she said, I've heard that thing. That's not the first time. I heard somebody say that I had never wanted to marry. You know, some ladies say they are going on the road. He said, Sister Angie, how now? And God is, what is, what is there? What's your problem? <laughs> and you're like, ah. <laughs> Kilo Day, I just greeted you. Hey, greet me for what? <laughs> good morning. What is good about the morning? And that's why we'll be greeting people anyhow. Ah. If it's your fellowship, don't be angry. Go and pray. You don't know what some people are going through. You don't know that she's been, she has been looking at you in that fellowship. You look like her father. That's why she doesn't like you. Anytime you laugh, she hears her father's laughter. If you, if you greet that guy, girl on the expressway, she will push you into the part of a moving vehicle. She won't know. So if you see your fellowship, your child, don't be angry. Just go and pray for her. This woman, she was sharing it. Yes, my wife and I were watching yesterday. She preached yesterday, but we, we caught up with it later in the evening. Down till word of knowledge, no revelation. People are counseling, nobody are just preaching, they prophesy. Somebody actually pointed to her one day. Make a long story short. One day she actually went and knelt down. She didn't know it was possible to greet her father. You know, that's how God just God just say, God, God will not let you know. People say he needs to apologize. Are you crazy? It's your father we're talking about. He will never apologize. I can't be waiting for him to apologize. He it. I saw one day one American guy and he said, No, he, he, he needs to come to tell us what he did, man. He, I said, Look at you. You will do that. You will do worse. I think it's DMX, one of the, these very big uh, artists. He's the son. I saw the boy, you know. Look, you no, know, cocking up his head like that. I say, he, he, he does not go to church. He does not go to church. See, your father, for goodness sake, you prostrate for him with all his evil. If you want to live long, if you don't do it, you'll be worse than him. This is a spirit, so. That's how you deliver yourself. So I will not be like the way he did, so I will not dishonor him. I want to go to somewhere now. If your father or your mother are quarreling, don't take sides. It doesn't concern you. You were not there when they married. This fight began before you were born. So what is your own now? Greet your father. Greet your mother. Let them be fighting their, their fights there. Wash his car, wash our clothes, wash our car. Just don't, don't, if you take sides, you're looking for trouble. If your mother gets, gets angry and packs away, carry half of your clothes to her house, the new house. <laughs> Keep the other half <laughs> in the old house. I'm telling you, say, you are still going to see your father. What did you say? You are still going to see who? Thank you. You are the one that told me. He's my father. If he's not, let me know. <laughs> now that you say he is the one, I have to go and say, why? So that God will not join me in the midst of these problems. <laughs> I'm not saying it is easy, but it must be done. You can't just be falling sick anyhow because people are fighting. Especially when you're a big boy, you know, you've already grown, you're, you're now a, a, a senior teenager in your 20s. Never join fight. What did I say? Never. I'm not talking to your father because of one woman. That's your mother. I'm calling one woman. No. Don't join the fight. Though. He said, did you see what your mother did? I did not see it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see it. You didn't see it, daddy. I refused to look. I know some of you, if you are listening to this, you'll be quarreling with the man that has the money to pay your school fees and now praying to God to send money. God is not going to send shishi. God, God that used to be in the Labour Party. He doesn't give shishi. <laughs> I know that, really. One young man came to me one time. He said, whether I could help him. I said, I should help you because of what? He said, his father and his mother are quarreling. His father married a new wife. Uh-huh. Did he get a new son? What's wrong with you? Did you... <laughs> your father has money. Your problem now is that he's quarreling with your mother. Did he quarrel with you? Are you, look at this foolish boy. Because you took sides, you're not coming to me. Am I not your new father? Did I marry your mother? <laughs> Some people, you know, <laughs> pride 
you don't let them think. Which one is cheaper? To go and say, Daddy, good morning, I came to greet you. Have, just, I know what, it's not even hard. What I like about men, men don't want to hear anything. It's not like, uh, Daddy, you are looking nice this morning. What's concerning you, whether you look nice? Just carry sponge and soap, go to the car, wash. Then go there, check clothes where you never carry the cloth, wash. Long diet, iron the thing. Don't greet him. What are you greeting him for? <laughs> Clean the house and then sit down there. And then, Daddy, please, I want to be going back to school. And I said, You can go. I said, Daddy, I don't have money to go. Ah. Even if you won't give money, pay for this one you have done. <laughs> <laughs> now, that one is a joke. <laughs> that one is a joke. That one is a joke. But he will give you money. He will. Tell him, Look, I'll be back home. I will come back home in about two weeks' time. Why are you going up and down like that? I see you are the only one in the house. Just come and keep your company. So like, let me help some, do some outreach. Okay, okay. How much did you say you needed? Just double the money. It was 50K, but now that he's asking, 100K. He will transfer it in. Not go and meet Pastor Bank. How can I help you? Can't help you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have my own children. I always call him every time to collect money. I will add you to it. This doesn't make any sense. For this cause, many are weak and sick. One of the reasons people don't honor their parents. The promises of God have conditions, every single one of them. I'm just mentioning a number of them. You can't have bitterness in your heart. You can't. You can't have bitterness. You must forgive. You must forgive. You must forgive. You can't have bitterness in your heart. It makes people sick. You can't. You can't have worry. Worry must be removed from your soul entirely. Can I just beg you? Don't use your hand to beg for trouble. To look for that. It's like, I don't want to start that one now. When God gave me a skill on how not to worry. I learned that from David. My heart is not, my eyes is not hurting, my heart is not proud. I don't involve myself in matters too difficult for me. Many people are stressed because they have to build a house. They are stressed because they have to acquire this. They are stressed. The one that makes me laugh. Now, stressing yourself because you have to build a house is bad. The most biker is bad. But the one I don't understand is when you stress yourself to compete with people. Holiday is coming now, are we? Schools are going on holiday now. Summer is coming. And you must go abroad. Please. Going abroad is for those who have money that they have nothing else to do with. Do you get my point? You're not supposed to pray about it. It's not a prayer point. You can't even say, Father, this next holiday, in the name of Jesus, I want to go to Paris, and then from there we'll go to Amsterdam. In the name of Jesus, you will supply. That's why you can't give. You have created more needs than the resources God has supplied to you. If you are in Enugu, travel to Abakaliki. Is that not travel? Do you get my point? I don't want to sit on that, but please, eh? My own is about healing, health. You cannot allow yourself to buy problems that God didn't give you, that didn't come to you naturally. So, Pastor Bank, I bought that land well on this level now. I've not had money for one year. Sell it. That's why you are owing people. The man that supplies cement, you haven't paid him till now, and you want to go to heaven. <laughs> Let me tell you what you do sell that land with a small building that you didn't finish on it, and go and pay the man that has cement. You've been, this guy, he was a member of your church. You got collected steel rods from. You stopped going to that church because of steel rods, and you want to go to heaven. Please, I'm begging you, go and sell that land. After all, their rod is there. The cement is there. Give them their money. And then the balance of it that's remaining, go and meet your landlord. And say, what will you give me as a discount if I pay five years' rent? Negotiate. So at least five years, you don't have to think of where to live. And have peace of mind. Let me give you the word of the Lord. Before the end of the five years, you'll be, you will prosper so much, you will find it hard to believe. And all the sickness that the are you will go away. Please, I want to pray for somebody. In Jesus' name, you won't waste money on medicine again. Amen. It's so important. You know, he... It's so important. I don't want you to buy expensive medicine. I want someone to claim healing for those that he, the sickness has been taking costly drugs. You know? 
costing you a lot of money. I want no take a minute. I'll continue my message in the morning. I want you to pray. And I want you to reject sin then. And pray for somebody. Pray for if you are the one paying paying that money, pray. There are better things to do with your money. Pray for the person. God will heal the person. You have shown love by spending that money. That's giving you low cost standing the life of the person. Pray, say, God, have mercy. I receive healing for my father. I receive healing for my mother. I receive healing for myself. I can't spend... No, really, it's very important. Those are things I just waste. When you talk about uh, canker worm. It's canker worm. It wastes, it wastes resources. You bring money, enters pockets. There's holes have been dug in it. Or in them because of sickness. Just pray to God. I'm not saying, look, there's no boju in it. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive healing today. Jesus Christ died to set me free. Jesus Christ died to set me free. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me quickly end this, all right? These teachings, please. I need to say one more thing. I've explained that we put our bodies on the altar. And I was pr- praying with one brother one day. I just said, look, this is how you're going to pray this prayer. I said, okay, so the doctor said you have a sickness that we kill. Tell me now. Yes. I said, so this is how we're going to pray. I said, Lord, if you, because that's one thing I have done. I'm not saying I'm doing it faithfully, but I'm, I remind myself once in a while. I've done this thinking. If they give me six months to live, God comes. Say, you will have six months. Put your house in order. For you will die and not live. And I say, how long? He says six months. So I say, what am I going to do in six months? I've reason- I know what I will do in six months. So I had this thought years ago. I said, okay, why don't you do it now? So I don't have to tell you you have six months to go. Do you get my point? Get busy. Like Slex like Samra, you want a casket or you want the Bible? For you, what's your purpose in life? You want a casket or you want to fulfill that purpose? These are deals we can make with God in quotes in quote now. Like I said, Samuel, you must prophesy. There's, you can't be a farmer. You must lead Israel. There's nothing you can do. Your name is Samuel. Hannah and your father and your uh, Hannah and, you, and the Lord had arrangement about you before you were born. You were a product of a deal. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and all of us, we don't belong to ourselves. So if you say, okay, my mother's name is not Hannah. Your Lord is Jesus Christ. You give your life to him. Just like God owned Samuel, so the Lord owns you now. So he must do with you as he pleases. And you cannot afford to be an obstruction. You can't. If he says, Samuel, stay in the tabernacle, stay there. You want to be a, 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 a what they call it, a merchant traveling up and down. It won't work. That's how we put our bodies on the altar. And we say with our mouth, how do you put your body on the altar with your mouth? Say, Lord, your purpose for my life. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You have, you have to say it in prayer. We are going to pray in a moment now. You have to say, God, your purpose for my life I will fulfill. If you give me health, this is what I want to do with it. You give me life, it's to fulfill your purpose. I said you should open the particular scripture, right? Okay, I've not said it. Okay. Luke chapter 13. This is where I want to stop all right, the teaching on this particular matter. From verse 6, the Lord was telling a parable. He said, a man had a fig tree which had been planted on his vineyard and it came for fruit on it and did not find any. Please notice that. It came for fruit on it and did not find any. He was looking for what? Fruit. And he said to the vineyard keeper, behold, for three years I have come looking for fruits on this fig tree without finding any. What's the next word? Cut it down. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? That is, God is looking for fruits in our lives every day. And if we don't bear, you know the truth? This commandment has been issued. He said, cut it down. And the vineyard keeper answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir. He was interceding. Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. Now notice the next one. And if it bears fruit next year, 
fine. But if not, then we can cut it down. Look, it's a cut it down I'm warning about. God waits for fruit. Then he demands fruit. And he can wait no longer. Did you hear what I said? He waits for fruit. Then he demands the fruit. Then he can wait no longer. A time comes in which he says, cut it down. What kind of fruit is he waiting for? That's what I'm talking about. There are two kinds of fruits. Let me just explain that and then we can go. One, there's fruit of character. There's fruit of what? Character. Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit. That is, we are walking by the Spirit. This is the fruit. Love. Joy. Peace. Let me just, uh, um, let's just open to it so I can quote it and not uh, miss my words. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the things he's looking for. Now, please, I want to quickly go to Second Peter. Second Peter is very, very important in this. Brethren, these are things we tackle. We don't just ask God for health. There are conditions, though. He said, for by this, I'm verse 4 now. For by this he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. So that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence. In your faith, what do you do? Supply moral excellence. Please, I want to just switch to a simpler translation. Supplement your faith with the generous provision of moral excellence. Now you supply to moral excellence knowledge. Add to knowledge self-control. To self-control patience or patient endurance. And to that one add godlikeness, godliness. And to that add brotherly affection. And to that one add love for everyone. I just picked from New Living Translation. That's one fruit God is looking for in our lives. And if he doesn't find it, the word may go out that says what? Cut it down. Please, Christians, don't play with development of godly character. You know, have you ever encountered Christians that tell lies, they tell lies and cheat people? And you are wondering, how long do you plan to live? You shouldn't want to live long. Because as an old man, you are going to be very alone. But this is a cut short people's lives. As Christians, you must reject every kind of lying and cheating other people. He said, this is the will of God concerning you, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immor... The one I don't understand, do you know, you see Christian married men. You know, some people here, we say, is this a joke? Is this man joking? Does not No, he will die and go to hell. No, that's how I preach this day, so. I say that like that. The other day I sent it out on WhatsApp channel and say, those of you who sleep with men for money, you will die and go to hell. She cannot. There's no other way to say it now. So why I tell people have a threat? It's not a threat, it's a divine promise. It's a divine promise. Me, threat, do I look, even me say I'm afraid not to go. You are talking about threatening somebody. Am I the one that sent people to hellfire? Is that Pastor you are afraid? Hey, Jesus said, fear him. Is that not what he said? Yes. Men, okay, and women too, okay? But just that some things are just men's problems. Men who commit adultery will fall sick and die prematurely. They don't stop. Let's say the way it is. Can we say the way it is? No need to color it. Oh. <laughs> no, you know why I can't even color it, even if I wanted to. Because I'm afraid that if I color it now, God will now punish me for not delivering the message. <laughs> to save my life, I tell you the truth. Is that not what he said? If I send you to a wicked man and you don't want him, and he dies in his wickedness. I'm coming to your house. Please, if you are the pastor of a church, let me just beg you. And people come to church on Sunday, don't lie. You know why? Sometimes, this happens a lot. Because if this one is going to die in his sin, send him to church to go and hear a word of truth. There's only one problem with that sinner. He has one problem. He had drives a brand new S class that he bought last year. And he drives it to your church. And you, your covetousness, instead of preaching to him, he says, you can give your way into salvation. Then the guy plants a seed of 10 million. Then God now kills you that he lives longer than you. You say, check out. Is it good? 
See, I think sometimes we pastors will go and buy, if you're a pastor of a big church, you go and buy dark goggles that you can't see through inside the church. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're weird. Praise God. Today, <laughs> I have a word from heaven. I don't know who did it. Nobody will be saying that pastor is preaching about me. Are you preaching about me? Yes, but I don't know. Do you follow my point? Just go there. Have somebody beside. Maybe read your scriptures. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 5. You're shaking your head like this. Love your wife and as Christ loved the church. Uh, you could be quoting scripture. Just close your eyes. The soul that sin it, it shall die. This is the will of God concerning you, your sanctification. You know, God will not make you turn. Your, with your blind eyes, you will turn at the sinner. <laughs> you will preach to him. No, really. Sometimes, if I pass a picture, I, I, I will find a way. Just don't, or something. Okay, you don't want to wear that go. Just do it like this. Praise God. Look at your Bible from beginning to the end. <laughs> because some people, that big man came with his big car. You didn't want to offend him. And the woman told him that his church, he was a junior pastor. His senior pastor tend to go outside, go and do his work. He will go out, check all the cars, and who came with them, and send the list to pastor. Yes. Oh, you don't know what he would do. He said to me, he said, ah, he said, Pastor Parker, God has to forgive us. He said, we did things those days. His job to sit outside and be marking. I'm serious. As we are driving in, he's checking, he's writing, he's sending code to pastor. No money. Hey, if you're a pastor, that's where your problem has been. I, I mean, when I talk like this, sometimes it's like a joke. But you know the truth. God will actually execute all things I'm saying Actually, he's doing them already. People just don't know. They don't lie to them that he's a devil. They were saying, no, now, what else would I do to those people, to, to, to make them listen to correction? I afflict them. There's, the whole body is full of sores. There's nowhere to beat again. No, that's what he said to Isaiah. He says, no, he is the devil. I've come to tell you today, it is not the devil. Number one fruit God is looking for before he cuts people down is what? Character. You know, I quote Kenneth Hagin a lot, and I'm not ashamed to do that. Because it was a prophet who spoke so much to me. Not directly, through his messages. He said many times he's praying for people. One literally put his hand on the person. Because he used to have those divine manifestations. And the Lord came, put his own hands on his hand and removed them. So, he thought, so his eyes were closed. So he thought his hand was too heavy on that person's head. So put the hand back. His eyes were still closed. This time he was gentler. They felt the hands come again, remove his hands away. I was like, I didn't press you hard this time now. So the third time, he opened his eyes and laid hands on that fellow. And he felt the hands again, take his hands and pull the hands off. Then he paused. He knew something was going on. He said, Lord, what is happening? He said, he's going to die. And there's nothing you can do about it. He said, why? He said, I've waited for him for 20 years, 25 years to judge himself and live righteously. Tell us this story not once, not twice. I tell you what I say to one, I say to all. He said, I've waited for him. He said, He has never lived more than maybe two weeks at a go in righteousness and holiness in the last 20 something years. He said, Therefore, I've judged him. I've given his body over to Satan. He said, There's nothing you can do, he's going to die. He said, Pray for him, reconcile him. He said, This is the best time for him to die anyway. At least now he's suffering, he's praying. So he prays for the fellow. Taught him the word of God, helped him to repent of all his sins and everything, and he left. Few days later, the guy died. Not once, not twice. Different ones he told us. And, it's, and according to him, he says, See the patience of God. Because 30, and 30 years may look long to you, but it's not long ago. You know, sometimes I think about it. I graduated from school 33 years ago. Sometimes I think about you know, it's. It's, it's like, no, 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 it's not, is it true? Is it, is, it, is it true? And it's like yesterday, sir. And do you know what? I'm still feeling young. I told you I was doing flips in my house. I do one funny thing. I, I tell you, what, if, I'm on, if I'm walking and on gutter, you know, the edge, I walk on the ledge. I still do it till now. I have to exercise my balancing part of my brain before it forgets how to balance. Every time you inside the car, the brain says, no need to balance again. <laughs> So you may think you, you have time, you don't have, and then the, fact, the truth is that you don't know how, when God started counting your own time. Yes, sir. And 
You want to hear something? It's not only years it counts. It counts opportunities. You can say, I'm giving you 10 chances for conviction and repentance. You don't know when you use nine. God is waiting for the fruit of character. Second fruit is waiting for is, why did I give you a life? I won't wait forever. I hope you're getting my point. My best examples in this regard are preachers because I'm a preacher. So I understand that. You can't wait forever to start the work that God said you should do. And when I say pursuing business, let me make money first so that when I come into ministry, they won't say I came there to look for money. The day, the day send you. The day that you don't want to say, they, they don't want them to say, I did what I gave you life, I gave you a ministry. See, whether you are young or old, if God has called you to ministry, start to. As soon as, look, you will know when the time is right. He doesn't wait forever. I've said it again and again. If Jonah didn't set his heart right, he would have, that fish would have digested him. I don't think God was joking. If he did not repent, if he did not repent, if he did not repent, he would have properly drowned. And you know the truth? There are so many Jonas that are drowned, you don't know. They didn't make it into the Bible. No, think about it. If that one did not repent and did not finally get to Nineveh, why would they give me a whole chapter? The prophet that died didn't deliver his message. What I will go, I mean, didn't Saul die? We learn from Saul now. There are many people that have died. That young prophet died. Did he not die? We have enough people that have died. We don't have that Jonah. We only read the story of Jonah because he made it finally. He repented. And God was able to execute that which he proposed for him to do in his life. Those are the two kinds of fruits that God is asking for. Can we begin to pray? I've spoken enough for today. That's the condition. For those who want to argue, <laughs> I would like to just, I don't like to do this often, but I like to do it now. Kennedy said, healing is conditional. I'll give you his words. He taught us a lot about faith. Yeah, he said, look, pastors, teach your people healing is conditional. He said that as an old man. I want somebody to begin to pray. Say, Lord, if you give me this health, this is how I will serve you. You're not trying to pay. You're trying to realign. You're not trying to pay. You are trying to realign. Say, from today, this is the will of God concerning me, my sanctification. That I abstain from sexual immorality. That I learn how to possess my body in sanctification and honor. And that I will never defraud anybody. You need to say that to the Lord. You need to say that to the Lord. This is the will of God concerning me. My sanctification. Say that to the Lord. Lord, this is your will. I'm confessing it. I lay my body on the altar again. Anything that's laid in that altar is consecrated. So I lay it on the altar. I add to my faith virtue. Say all of these things. Because of time, I, we can't go through all the scriptures now. But begin to say it to yourself. Lord, have mercy upon me. That is why we require mercy. Because many times we have made mistakes. We have done what is wrong. He's mindful that we are both flesh. But what do we do? We ask for mercy. Mercy is predicated upon repentance. You cannot receive mercy if you don't plan to turn. There is no mercy for those who are not turning. There is no mercy for those who are not turning. Jonah had to go to Nineveh if mercy would be activated in his life. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Now I obey your word. Disobedience leads to affliction. Disobedience. Disobedience leads to affliction. Time to throw away jealousy and envy. Many are sick because of envy and jealousy. What I have told is a matter of fact. Many are sick because of envy and jealousy. Repent. Repent. Literally repent. Repent. The kingdom of God is near you to release divine power into your life. What is waiting for is repentance. What does it mean to repent, to turn, to have a change of heart? To say, if I have sinned, I will not do it anymore. That is what it's about. That is what it's about. Let's not color it any other way. Many people are using wrong doctrines to console themselves. It won't help you. Today you have to repent of wrong doctrines. 
a lot of people. Instead of them to say, look, I have, an, I have a fault in this area. God, give me grace. They start you know, rewriting the scriptures. That God is not angry with me. God is not angry with me. He said he will never be angry with me. He's never angry with me. Ah, uh-uh. And you're walking in this sin. What is wrong with you? You want him to punish you first? He said, God doesn't... He will have to prove to you that he punishes people. Repent of wrong doctrines. You need to. Anybody holding on to a doctrine that God does not judge iniquity has to repent of it. You can argue if you wish, but you will learn it within the next one month. Now deliver yourself. That's what I'm saying. Deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. Fools, because of their iniquity, are afflicted. That's what the Bible says. Fools, because of their disobedience, they are afflicted. Say, Lord, I will not be a fool. I will not walk in disobedience. The word of God is always coming, correcting you. This is the will of God concerning you, your sanctification. This is the will of God that you walk in the truth. And this is the will of God that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Begin to give the Lord thanks. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Say, Lord, I receive that prosperity. I receive it. I receive divine health. I reject all forms of affliction. I walk in the truth.